Have you ever wondered what increases someone's stress tolerance or why some people seem to cope so well under stress? What's up, guys? My name is Lucas, and today we're going to look into how to increase what's known as your heart rate variability. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my mission is to bring you guys the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please be sure to hit that like button below. Please hit that bell button as well to get notifications for my new videos. And also if you have any comments or questions related to this topic or any other topic related to health, I spend the time to go through each comment and respond to them individually. So feel free to leave a comment or question below. Right, so today we're gonna to look into um, heart rate variability and specifically we're gonna look at what we can do to actually increase this, this parameter. Um, so I must emphasize this quick disclaimer that the information depicted in this presentation is purely for informational purposes only. Please consult your healthcare professional before making any changes to your lifestyle or routine. Right, so heart rate variability, to put simply, is actually different to your heart rate. So your heart rate is measured in beats per second and is the average over one minute. Generally speaking, a lower heart rate suggests rest and relaxation and a higher heart rate usually indicates stress, exercise or exertion. Heart rate variability on the other hand measures the specific changes in time between each heartbeat. So it's the difference between each successive heartbeat. And generally speaking, we want a higher heart rate variability and a lower resting heart rate. That indicates a good aerobic fitness capacity and better recovery. So here are some of the signs, signs and symptoms of a low HRV reading. And on the left-hand side, you can see um, HRV scores. Uh, so you can see that the, the average across the population um, and you can see the numbers. So generally speaking, if you're between the ages of 18 to 25, the average is between 68 plus or minus eight as a heart rate variability score for males and 65 plus or minus 10 or so uh, for females. And then you can see the different age ranges as we go down. Now, a low HRV, symptoms of a low HRV would be poor stress tolerance poor resilience, difficulty recovering from training, poor immune function, easier to fatigue, high sympathetic drive, anxiety, depression, low sex drive, and even poor sleep. So clearly HIV is paramount to a healthy lifestyle and also um, can dictate a person's physical fitness. So Looking at the signs and symptoms now of a, a high heart rate variability, they have, generally speaking, excellent stress tolerance. They have strong resilience. Should be a little space there. Um, they have rapid exercise recovery time. They have ro a robust immune function. They have strong day-to-day -day energy. They have good parasympathetic dominance. They have a strong sex drive. They have healthy sleep better aerobic fitness and a higher VO2 max. So the first strategy to increase this heart rate variability, and by the way, guys, there's going to be a few products linked um, in the video description. Things that I mentioned, if you want to know where to purchase, there'll be a link in the video description. So check that out. Um, so first of all, we have cold showers. Now, Cold exposure actually acutely increases sympathetic activation, which is the fight or flight response. And that makes sense because it's highly stressful. It's cold. The body needs to react by increasing adrenaline and cortisol and other things like that. But over time and after cold acclimation or you know, getting accustomed to the cold, the body shifts its autonomic nervous system towards the parasympathetic nervous system. And that therefore will lead to a shift and increase in HRV. So generally speaking, I like to uh, have a cold shower about one hour or one and a half hours before bed um, because 
the body needs to be cool to sleep well. Um, and it also gives me about one hour more of um, productivity until I can go to bed. Next up, we have choline supplements. Um, so you'll see various links to choline supplements in their video description, but basically choline is a nutrient or pseudo vitamin found within eggs. Um, it's an essential nutrient and basically choline supplements can help to increase acetylcholine production in the body now and in, and in the brain. So acetylcholine generally speaking can help shift one's um, nervous system towards a parasympathetic response. And so that can generally speaking shift someone's HRV. And we've seen some reports in various communities of, you know, people starting like 300 milligrams of alpha GPC or 300 milligrams of CDP choline one hour before bed um, and seeing improvements in their HRV scores. So increasing acetylcholine can stimulate the vagus nerve, which then therefore may increase HRV. Um, so a link well, links to various choline supplements you can see in the video description. Next up, we have PEMF therapy. So this stands for pulsed electromagnetic fields. Um, and that device on the right-hand side is called Infopathy. Uh, there's a link to that in the video description. I'm going to create a whole new video on that device. And specifically, I'll be doing a podcast on that with the founders. Um, German technology basically helps to input frequencies into water and turn that water into um, basically any substance that's been programmed, um, which is pretty phenomenal. I've been experimenting with some things there, but basically PM, PEMF therapy has been shown to also shift one's HRV response uh, in the positive direction and, and help with that HRV tone, which is excellent as a, you know, therapeutic modality, you know, that can help with improving one's physical fitness. So huge fan of PEMF therapy and a really useful device is that infopathy device. Next up, we have my favorite seaweed, um, Eclonia carva. Now, this particular seaweed not only lowers cortisol, not only increases alpha waves in the brain, but it also is powerful at improving sleep and therefore improving HRV. And subjective, my subjective experiences, you know, before and after Eclonia Carver, uh, with my aura ring, uh, I, I noticed huge shifts in my HRV response. Um, at one stage, I was con continuously getting a HRV score in the 100, 120, 125 for like a period of time, which was phenomenal. Um, but you can see the fluorotannins found in this Eclonia carva actually induce sleep by acting as positive allosteric modulators of the GABA-A receptor, the GABA-A benzodiazepine receptor. So, I mean, this is not medical advice, but is Eclonia carva a natural benzo? My subjective experience, my families, my friends, my clients, they've all said the same thing. Eclonia carva helps them sleep a lot more deeply. So that's another tool that we can use to increase HRV. Next up, we have omega-3s. Surprisingly, uh, omega-3s can raise heart rate variability following exercise. Um, so that's also very beneficial and useful. Bear in mind also omega-3s can lower cortisol. So generally speaking, I like to, if I were to use omega-3s, which I don't, I rather eat seafood, but omega-3s um, can be used before bed to increase HRV as well. So there'll be a link to an omega-3 supplement in the video description if you want to know where to purchase a high quality omega-3 supplement. Right, next on, next one we have is avoiding sleep deprivation. So Acute sleep deprivation doesn't really have much of an effect on your HRV, but it's an accumulation of micro sleep deprivation that will increase that will that will um, affect your HRV. So we do not want to accumulate serious amounts of sleep loss, um, as that will also affect 
our intracellular magnesium levels. So you can see many of the side effects of sleep deprivation and one of which is a reduction in HIV as well. The final one we have is pretty unique. Um, this is a GABA infused oolong tea. Now, um, this study looked at how they added, well, the effects of adding GABA, um, which is a supplement, which again, you can see a link to below, combined with oolong tea. Um, now, oolong tea is a longevity tea. It's similar to the one that I mentioned, Jagulin, on this channel. Um, and what they found was that this combination was also able to increase heart rate variability. Uh, this study was, was actually conducted in Australia. There'll be a link to that in the video description itself. Um, so I found that quite fascinating. The fact that we can, you know, leverage the power of now herbal medicine plus supplements to support our HRV. So guys, if you've, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out my website, ergogenic.health. Check out some of my courses. I have some amazing health courses that goes into a lot more detail. You'll see a discount code YouTube 20 to save 20% off my courses um, and check out my podcast and my Instagram and my free newsletter. So thanks for tuning in guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.